In this video, we have a Colt 1860 Army Black Powder Revolver. There's the box from Uberti. Uberti, this is a, re a replica made by Uberti, which is from Italy. Don't point at anyone, basic instructions. And then look at this puppy. Or, wait for the smoke to clear. It's more like it. This thing's a beauty. Really nicely made. Beautiful wooden grips. I don't know if they're walnut, I think they're walnut. So this is the 1860 Army made by Colt. It's a 44 calibre cap and ball. So it has a percussion cap, the black powder, a felt wad patch, whichever you want. Then the ball, that's how I do it. Some people grease the tops to prevent chain fire and stuff, but if the ball's really tight fitting, it shouldn't do that. So like I said, it's a 44 calibre uh, replica. This is my baby, really love it. The action's beautiful. Uh, the way this came about for you ones that like a little bit of history, Colt had a 44, well they originally used an 1851, most of the US troops, 1851 Navy, which was 36 calibre, smaller than this, didn't really have the knockdown power but still did a lot of damage for a lot of people over those years, but they wanted something with a bit more power. They already had the Colt Dragoon, which was 44 calibre like this, but the only problem was you couldn't wear it on a bolt, uh, on a bolt, on a belt holster on the hip. It had to be in a ho horse holster on the side of the horse because it was that heavy. It was over four pounds in weight, and the thing is massive. Look it up. This one, what they did was, when the advances in metallurgy came about, they'd be able to, uh, they were able to make stronger steel. They used a Colt Navy frame with a cutout on the bottom, this is what they did, a new barrel and the cylinder I think was reamed out because if you look at the older models, this is the fluted which was actually weaker back in the day but obviously this is a replica, it's new, I like the look of the fluted barrel, it's really nice. If you look at the older ones they were reamed out and then they go back to the original 36 calibre size at the back where the cap is. Uh, and it worked, basically. They were able to have a 44 caliber with that knockdown power that they could wear on the hip. So, great advancement, one of those popular ever. I love it. Uh, occasionally you can have cap jams with the thing where the caps, because it's an open, uh, it's open there, uh, the caps can fall in and get jammed. But it doesn't bother me. If you slightly put it up when every time you uh, cock it, they normally fall out. Uh, as I just showed you, for every shot you have to pull the hammer back on this, it is single action, so if it's closed it won't go again. Uh, the way you'll, uh, This has actually got a case hardened frame, this is what I look for. See that? I don't know if you can see that beautiful thing there, you can see where it's been hardened. A lot of these black powder revolvers, well not a lot, just a few of them and they look nice, have this. Well this is just a, black, uh, a brass trigger guard, but a lot of them have a brass frame and over time they can become stretched. So that's why I went with a case hardened steel. Uh, the way you load this thing is, a bit of a pain to be fair, put it on half cock, rotate the cylinder for which one you want, then you use a powder flask, well actually don't do that because that's bad. If you're just doing one shot okay because this is basically a grenade so if any, if you fire say the six, even though it has got a thing to stop, the powder. So you fired the stick, uh, six and there's hot embers there and anything gets back into this and it's got powdered in and it's sealed, the powder's got nowhere to go, it's basically a, a pipe bomb. So what I like using is the little plastic vials that hold 30 grains which is the maximum for this. For targets you can use 24, that's what I use, or anything basically, to around 20. So you load each cylinder with your black powder then after you've done the black powder, you get your wad, this is what I use, it's like a piece of felt. And then the felt goes on top of that. Then you can press the felt down a little bit if you want, and then 
These are the balls, 44 caliber balls, hefty things. I use, I can't remember what I use, I think it's 454. Yeah, I use 454, so when it seals, it takes off a ring of lead. So you know it's got a really tight seal again to not have chain fires, fingers crossed. Chain fire, by the way, if none of you know is, is when you fire this off and multiple go off. All these cylinders can go off, take a finger off, whatever. It's, it's not nice, not something you want. Right, so after you've done, now you've got your black powder, your 30 grains, your felt wad, which ideally lubed, it just helps the gunk, you'll know when you fire these things, they get fouled up pretty quick and then you have to clean and paint. Lube the felt wad, so black powder, felt wad, lubed, ball, correct size, and then this has got its own, can you see, loading lever. So you put this over the cylinder, each one, on the hard turn, where is it? Clicking. And then seat that down and do that for each one, once you've done that. Now, this, in between each cylinder, has a little dot there, so it's locked. So when it's in a holster or when we've got it safe basically, it's like a safety, it's not going to fire onto because you've got these caps. Oh, that's the last thing you have to do, you have to put these caps on. And even with a whack with this, it can set one off. Now this thing in between the cylinders I still don't trust, so I do the old school and I only load five at a time. And then I keep the hammer on an empty cylinder. That way it's proper locked in, not a chance. Uh, so now you've loaded up all the cylinder, you've put all your six caps on, I'll show you the caps. That's these things, I don't know if you can see, little percussion caps. These new ones are not corrosive, the old ones used to be. And you've loaded up all your cylinder, all the caps and it's ready to go. And they are a lot of fun, smoky, but it has got some power. There's actually a video on uh, YouTube with a guy that tests, if you just put in Colt 1860 Army versus Beretta against a Beretta, I think it's an M9, which is a 9mm Beretta, and in the ballistics gel, uh, gel this doesn't come far away from it. Uh, that's it guys, so the next videos on these will be shooting it hopefully. At the minute it's freezing, we're on a minus like, I don't mind shooting when it's cold but we're going to try and wait for a nicer day, take it out shooting, I'll let you, sh I'll, I'll, you know, do the damage with it, uh, let the wife shoot it as well. So yeah, that's about it. The only other thing is with these, I love these guys, I've, I've fired loads of modern cartridge guns throughout the years, yeah I like them, I love them, but there's something really, I don't know, nice about shooting these like they are good the smell the having to take them apart every time you come home and intensively clean them some guys put them in the dishwasher i wouldn't recommend it unless your wife's out that's what you're cleaning with believe it or not soap and water and it has to be nice and warm in front of a fire or something so you don't let the rust set in too much and really oiled up and you have to do that every time so it teaches you a lot about them, how to take them apart, etc. and stuff. There will be a lot more black powder firearms on this channel, because that's how I go. I like my air guns, I like my less lethal. This is what I go to for lethal, as I haven't got my full license yet. Uh, so we're going to be testing these, some revolvers, some more rifles, black powder rifles. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching, be good to each other, don't forget to like, subscribe, peace.